Yo, what up guys? So now we're going to be talking about horizontal translations in this video. And what I mean by a horizontal translation is whether a function is moving left or right. And the letter in the transform function that deals with horizontal translations is this D value. So as we did in the previous videos, we'll go over the different values that D can take, the different cases, and then we'll describe each transformation and give an example. So the first case we'll deal with is when D is greater than zero. And if D is greater than zero, then all that means is that the function is translated to the right by D units. So for example, we'll use the same parent function that we used in the previous video, the square root of x. Now you can actually use any parent function that you want for all these examples. The square root of x is easier to show with horizontal translations because there won't be any crossing of the functions. So that's why I decided to use that in this case as well. So taking the square root of x and then transforming it to the square root of x minus four, notice how this is in the x minus d form right here, as we have it in the general transformation, x minus d. So x minus four, x minus d, that means the d value is four and it's greater than zero, so it's translated to the right by four units. So to show this graphically, we have our base parent function, the square root of x in red here, and then the square root of x minus four, we would take that function and translate it or move it to the right by four units. So, so we would end up getting this function here. Now, to be more specific, the vertex of the square root of x, it starts at zero, zero. So if we take this function and move it by four to the right, the vertex of our new transform function, the square root of x minus four, would start at four and zero. And that makes sense because any values that are less than four, if we plug those in, we would get a negative value in the square root and that would be undefined. And dealing with our final two cases, if D is equal to zero, then that just simply means that there's no horizontal translations. It doesn't move left, it doesn't move right. If D is less than zero, then the function is translated to the left by D units. So for example, if we have the square root of X plus four, now this is where it gets a little tricky when the D value is less than zero and recognizing when it is. We mentioned this in the uh, transformations overview video, but notice in the general transform function how it has to be in the form X minus D. So this is in the form of X plus a number. So if we change it to the form of having it X minus a number, we can rewrite the square root of x plus four as the square root of x minus negative four. All right, the square root of x plus four, we just rewrote it as the square root of x minus negative four, and that's the same thing because these two negatives make a positive. So now it's in the x minus d form, and the d value is negative four. So the D value is less than zero, so we know that this function would be translated to the left by D units. So showing it graphically, we would have our function, the our base function, the square root of X in red, translating it to the left by four units, we would end up with this function here, which represents the square root of X plus four. And to be more specific, the vertex starts at zero and zero of our base parent function, the square root of x. And since we move it to the left by four units, the vertex of the function x plus four would start at negative four and zero. And that makes sense because if you plug in any values for x that are less than negative four, you would get a negative in the square root and that would be undefined. So that's it. Those are all the cases for D. Again, the trickiest part is knowing when it's translated to the left. The way I like to remember it honestly is 
x minus 4, it's a bit counterintuitive. If you see a minus, it's going to the right. If you see a plus, it's going to the left. 